Hello, I'm Chris Cherry, owner and winemaker here at the Maha Estate, here in the western hills of Paso Robles. Uh, today we're going to taste uh, our Maha Estate lineup. This is a small family run operation. Myself, my wife Joanne, our kids Camille and Henry. We started making wine in 2001 under the Via Creek label and then in 2003 had the opportunity to purchase this 60 acre parcel here in the western hills of Paso. Uh, we call it the Maha because <clears throat> the name of the folks that used to live here was Maha and we like that name. It actually in, uh, it's got some interesting global uh, definitions in Sanskrit it means great or a higher place. In Arabic it means moon. And uh, once we found that out, that was just kind of a no-brainer. We, uh, we farm here uh, organically and biodynamically. We are certified in both. Um, as I had said, this is uh, a 60-acre parcel. As far as geography, we are 14 miles from the Pacific Ocean, which is that way. And our elevations are 15 to 1800 feet. We planted the vineyard in 2012 and 13. We have 13 acres of vines planted, planted mainly to um, Grenache and then Carignan, then Morved, then Syrah. We have a little bit of Petite Syrah, and then our white varieties are Claret and Roussan. So from a farming point of view, we like to look at, um, you know, we, we want to adapt to our surroundings. We want to work with Mother Earth. Um, you know, so much of agriculture is all about control. And uh, if you are here and see what's surrounding us, there's no way that we can control it. We can only adapt to it. So that being said, let's start off with uh, our first wine. This is the Maha Estate before anyone else. This is 100% Claret. So Claret is a white grape that hails from the Rhone Valley. It's quickly gaining popularity here in Paso. I think uh, the climate and soils are really great for Claret. Uh, there's a handful of other producers that we enjoy um, that make this variety. It, um, it is the only white wine that we make off this property under the Maha State label. And it's, it's really stunning. Um, it's got an interesting juxtaposition of richness and acidity. Aromatics are awesome. Aromatics are a little bit of burnt matchstick, um, some peach, some melon, some ripe pineapple. Uh, we have lots of folks that, that taste this wine and, and it reminds them of white burgundy, which is a big win on our side. Um, uh, burgundy is definitely uh, a, a place of inspiration for us in the white wine arena. Um, Texturally, it, it's pretty stunning. It's got, uh, it's got great cut as far as acidity goes. It's got wonderful texture and length, and its aging potential is yet to be known, but um, I think this wine will age quite nicely 10 to 15 years. We don't make very much of this. We make about 50 cases. Um, which is uh, about a third of what we harvest. Uh, we, har we work on uh, selecting just the finest barrels to go into this wine. So 50 case production and an absolute banger. The next wine we're going to go to is uh, one of our two red wines off the Maha. This is a wine called Understory. So conceptually, the two red wines are based on a yin and a yang 
a light and a dark, a masculine and a feminine, a fruit and a savory. Really, you can't have one without the other. Understory is based in Grenache with a little bit of uh, Carignan and Morved. Aromatics are kind of red to blue fruits, uh, some pomegranate, uh, some interesting kind of like cherry Luden's cough drops. Uh, it's got a cool, a cool kind of uh, citrusy orange peel. And most of that's coming from the, uh, the Grenache. The, the Carignan and Morved add a little bit more of a bassier note. That could be uh, maybe some asphalt or uh, crushed rock. On the palate, this wine is alive with energy. It's got great, great purity of fruit. Um, it's really engaging. It's got you uh, salivating uh, for more. It's a, it's a great food wine. This wine has been in bottle now about seven, six, seven months. So it's kind of settling into itself. Uh, I think ideally if you um, are drinking it now, it would be best to decant, uh, give some air, and then would really uh, evolve nicely through the evening. It's a, it's a wine at this point in time that you could really drink over a couple of days, um, but to be able to enjoy it with a handful of friends over a period of time is probably the best way to see it open up and evolve. We made about 70 cases of this. Um, ooh, that's yummy. And uh, I don't think it's going to last very long from the point of view of here at the winery. As we move to our third wine, we've got Backlit. These two wines are interesting because I always think folks will like one of them over another, and I'm usually wrong on that. Backlit is based predominantly in Petite Syrah with a pretty good chunk of Carignan Morved and then a little bit of Grenache. So it's, it's, it's the darker of the two um, wines. It's, this particular vintage I think comes off as it's, it's very forward, uh, pretty yummy. Aromatics give you uh, black fruits, kind of some, a, a little bit of a, I want to say creosole type thing. It's, it's kind of an interesting mix of something you like the smell of and something that you don't like the smell of, maybe, maybe like asphalt. I kind of like that asphalt smell. Uh, but underneath you've got a really, a really neat dark fruit profile. And then on the back end it kind of lifts up. You can actually kind of smell um, the aromatics kind of blossom further back on your uh, olfactory sense. No, hazel passages, something to that effect. Once again, great fruit, great energy, great purity. This wine's got a, a pretty dark uh, component to it. It's, uh, it's got kind of a, a soy umami thing. Once again, it's got you salivating for more. And I think that's, that's always a, a really a great quality in a wine that, you know, something that, that 
is calling you back for more so you can check it out, enjoy it, you know, as opposed to there are lots of wines out on the market that, you know, you pour yourself a glass and you're like, nah, that's good. Thanks. Let's go. Let's move on to the next one. This wine is constantly evolving. The, uh, the salivation component of it is, is really quite intriguing. As far as fermentation of both of the red wines, uh, they're almost all fermented in concrete. Concrete adds a great textural component uh, to the wine during fermentation. Uh, the, the fermentation process is usually three to four weeks. We work on extracting uh, flavor and developing texture during that process. But what we've really been working on lately is not to over extract tannin. This is a relatively young site. It's uh, very vivacious. It, it wants to give lots to us. So uh, it's really a, a balancing act of extracting all the, all the nice kind parts out of it and leave all the angsty hostile parts out. And that's really all about tannin extraction. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We made a uh, hundred cases of the backlit and uh, most of these wines are available to our mailing list and automatic allocation members. That being said, uh, you are tasting them now. Uh, so if you like these wines, please reach out to us, send us an email, give us a shout, go to our website. Uh, we don't make a lot of them. Uh, they are absolutely delicious and worthy of your time. So go to the website, check us out, see what we do, see some of the Via Creek wines that we do. And, um, thank you for tuning in.